Welcome back, everybody. Get ready for round two. We're going to see how the US does it in this time around with Google Trex, first time commander. So see how he holds out. And we'll see what Best Pony does on his side. Well, a little technical difficulties, recovered from it. And we're back. And everybody is looking like they're joining the squads. And uh, squad leaders are getting sorted out. Everybody's getting sorted out. So uh, we, we got a special guest with us, the crazy Russian. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? We're doing good here. We're doing good here. A yeah. So tonight. crazy Russian, you know, we saw we saw you play. We saw a lot of really tense moments well, uh, from your screen and just around you. So we want to know, like, what was going through your mind? You know, what was the original plan and what happens? What went wrong? Well, the original plan was for all four squads to uh, hit refinery and then kind of spread out east to west and clear down south. And uh, uh, I think Best Pony expected it, expect the, expected to have a lot farther south than we got it. So uh, we encountered some chaos, kind of regrouped there, and then, uh, you know, just tried to push on with the plan as best as we could. And uh, it got kind of crazy. It, you know, most of it's just kind of trying to keep people moving. You know, people like to, whenever they take fire, they like to sit down and kind of hunker down. But you just need to keep moving, keep moving to get into the objective and stuff. Yeah, you know, definitely you have to keep moving on this, this map. It's so open. And you guys really did push good into refinery. But it looks like once that Humvee went down or they started taking hits, then... The MRAB was abandoned. You know, you guys kind of lost a lot of your firepower, a lot of stuff that keeps the insurgents' heads down. So, but I mean, it looks like you, you know, you guys did the best you could and you regrouped when the chaos started to hit the fan. So, yeah, my, my squad did really well. Um, took us a little bit to finally get the, the boost to get across the road there that the Dishka was uh, covering. But once we did that, we did really well clearing buildings, trying to move in towards the HAB. Um, it just just didn't go our way. Yeah. So, what was your favorite part about that map? Um, I really like clearing all the apartment buildings. I think that's just super tense and fun. Um, your heart gets pounding. You know, your adrenaline gets going. Um, so, clearing all the buildings is my favorite part. <clears throat> uh, but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, crazy Russian, you know. I hate to bring this up, but it looks like you got a TK there when you were entering the building uh, <laughs> towards the end. So I, I did, I did. I uh, I heard machine gun fire from through a door. Um, so whenever I was going around the door, I was fully expecting an enemy to be there. And when I saw movement, I just pulled the trigger and didn't confirm. And I apologize to whoever that was. I can't remember his name, but uh, yeah, it, it happens. Yeah, you know, it, it definitely happens. And, you know, when that when that did happen, I said, you don't have much time to think, you know, it's life or death situation. So it's whoever fires first, whoever sees that person first. So you were just going on instinct. And, you know, when you turn corners and see a body moving, you just start to shoot. So, yeah, exactly. Especially in a building where your guys just got destroyed. So I don't blame <laughs> you. So, uh, Crazy Russian, you know, we thank you for coming out. Uh, thank you for doing this little interview and for playing. And uh, hopefully we'll get some good shots of you this next round. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks, Crazy. Thanks for stopping in. It's always good to hear kind of a first-person perspective as far as the round went. Yeah, thank you. So if we take a look here at the United States side, uh, you know, again, we're just watching the United States. We're making sure all the colors stay the same. But uh looks like they're trying to get some ideas for plans right now. So we'll see what happens. And just so you were aware, blue is the United States, while the red, oh, can't see it, red is the insurgent team. Yep, so the... Rounds have changed, teams have changed, so the uh, 
objective's still the same, but uh, plays out different every time. It's one of the cool things about these ops. So, so it's fun to see uh, different thought patterns and how these guys set up. And then it looks like the INS is definitely going to choose a different spot. It'll be a, it'll be a fun one. It's been tried before. <laughs> They only get like two blocks of room here to put up a roadblock. So um, once again, it'll be fun to watch how the other team reacts to this new position and uh, how all the cards fall out. Yeah, it's always interesting to see how the second round goes down because, you know, now the guys are a little bit more warmed up and, you know, there's different thoughts going through their heads of what went wrong and how they can avoid those situations next time what they can do better so you know hopefully we'll see some different plans some different ideas and uh, it'll be a fun fun round all right guys let's get over to the uh, market for the uh, platoon brief so last round you got a lot of first person view of the u.s well they're all on the ins now so we can just see how they uh, hold out in these different buildings and get to see a view of the defenders this time. Wait, Gonzo is Bravo FTO. Carson. Oh man, this is getting yeah. upset. Bravo, Bravo behind us. Hey, okay there. All right, sounds like the INS is about to uh, have a briefing. Sorry. Got Best Pony as their commander. Yes, we're gonna listen in to what they got going on here as soon as they're ready. All right, is everyone here? Everyone ready? Okay. Here, bro. All right, let's get this platoon brief on the road. So, uh, you know, okay work last round. I'd say um, excellent effort. The actual. Oh, implementation of the plan did not go quite as smoothly as we wanted. The the Humvees and fucking MRAP ended up a little out of position, and so we weren't able to get good direct fire support for you, and so you guys got cut up on that street because there was no 50 cal pointing down at it to shoot at that building. Uh, so, you know, that's that happens, so that's life. Part of it was also the plan was kind of set on them having the HAB down here, and they had it up there. So, you know, that happens too. Alpha, but we're going to just roll with it, okay? This is going to be a very, very good defense. We're playing alpha, pretty alpha. tight. Uh, I'm taking advantage of this intersection here, where we can get a lot of shit up in these apartment buildings. We can get a lot of people here, and we can turn this, if you look at this corner area here, they're, the only entrances really are these breaks in the wall, and if we, you know, sandbag or razor wire those off, we can basically turn this courtyard into an unassailable fortress of death and cut, and cut down the whole U.S. as soon as they try to get inside. Now, the way we're going to do uh, the destruction of the U.S. platoon is as follows. Squad 1 with server area is going to be responsible uh, for both manning the FOB building, which is directly to our 30 degrees north-northeast, and also for running the two Dishka technicals. Those Dishka technicals are pushing at live to this location near Village on the back side of this compound, and they're going to stay out of sight and out of mind, kind of scanning, maybe get a scout outside of them to look around with their binocs. They're going to wait for us to report where the U.S. Humvees are. Then they're going to go and hit the Humvees from the side and from behind and just wipe them out. They're going to wolf pack on those Humvees and destroy them. Once all the U.S. Humvees are destroyed, we basically... It's a, a winning game for us because we can use those discs to do drive-bys on their infantry. We can we can shit on them. Um, as far as the logies, rest right? of it... Yeah. Uh, no, you're not running Logis. Sorry. To clarify, even though Squad 1 is named Logi Squad, a uh, server error due to an incident on Whirlwind uh, is banned from running logistics on all Squad Ops platforms. Right. Not really, but that's that's just... Uh... Yeah, that's how it goes. Poor server. He flipped a Logi. She during did. a run in an op. It was bad. Anyways, the person who's running the Logis is going to be Squad 3, Han Von Solo Squad. They're going to run the lobbies, and they're also going to help staff this courtyard compound, and Han and I are going to work on off all the, the non-entrance entrances, like that hop hole over there, and funneling the actual entrances. Is that time for prayer? <laughs> Sorry, I, I fucking... I just got an agenda, so... 
so he's gonna get another up those humvees and frag those infantry yeah uh where was i yes the other squads then squad four with brennan is going to go and put people in these three buildings up here these multi-stories and if, honestly they could even throw a couple people in that multi-story as well just to really fuck with the u.s and they're going to defend those multi-stories to the death Meanwhile, the squad with Turtle Guy, squad 2, Rock the Casbah, is going to be holding onto these buildings in that general area. They're going to get Adishka up facing the south on one of the little uh, balconies, right? And it's going to be, you know, a pretty good Adishka. You can snipe some humping gunners with that baby. Which actually, as uh, I should bring that up, when you're going to, after a Humvee with a heavy machine gun, always aim for the gunner. Because if you kill the gunner, Humvee's not gonna shoot back at you anymore, and you can just fucking chase it down while the other guy tries feebly to get someone else in the fucking gunner seat. It's it's much better to decrew the Humvee by shooting the gunner out and then going after it and blowing up the, the driver while he's still trying to get away, than it is to put a few shots into the body of the Humvee, light it down to maybe half health, but then get plinked by the M2. But yeah, so we're gonna get one Dishka facing south and one Dishka facing north in this other apartment building with the balconies on it. So if they try to roll up the MSR with the Humvees, oh boy, they're going to have a very bad fucking day. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Remember, 3841, so just with the last round, we're down a couple people. We're going to... Actually, I think we're down less now because we don't have the streamers on our sides. That's... They have, they have them on theirs, so we're really only down by one. So we should be fine in terms of... uh soldiers so don't don't do anything silly right don't run out in the middle of the street and get sawed to death but just just be careful kill at least two u.s troops before you die i want everyone to kill two u.s soldiers before you die. you don't have my permission to die until that's done if everyone can commit themselves killing two u.s troops before they get shot like i don't care you get shot you have to run back like three blocks to find a medic so that way you can heal and be sure to get that second kill do it we, we need to each kill about two u.s troops and that way we can ensure a quick and clean victory here all right. Amen. Roger. Amen. All, all, uh, all, 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 all. Excellent. All, all, all. I got I got lock. one pizza. Okay, so yeah, so these break them out. Let's get ready for lot. All right, squad on me. He'll be the forward one. We're gonna follow right behind him. Uh, hopefully he can find any mines. Hopefully there won't be any mines. Uh, well, oh, there we go. That is the insurgent plan. It sounds like interesting as always. Best plan. Yeah. So. Some points that I heard from Best Pony's uh, brief was he wants really good defense, um, really tight defense. He wants to hold so down those apartments, and he wants to make sure that they funnel the United the, uh, States into the entrances. You, guys are you know, they the, uh, want to make sure that they have one way in, and, you know, if they do go in, there could be a risk of potentially getting hurt or just walking right into a death trap. So I'm excited to see what happens on the insurgent side. Yep, sounds like they're gonna keep it tight, just like uh, Google Tracks did. Which is good. It's good for defense. It makes the U.S. have to work at it. Yeah, so you can see all the United States here. Yep, sounds like they're still going over their command brief with the uh, the U.S. team. Why don't we uh, bring everybody who may have joined just for round two up to date on uh, what this operation is about? All right, so we can see this is Operation Desperado. The United States gets two automatic riflemen, one GL, one LAT, one medic. They get three Humvees with two transport trucks. The insurgents get two automatic riflemen, one lat, one scout, one raider, one medic, two dishka techies, two lodgy trucks, one FOB, one mortar, and two dishka emplacements. So I'm excited to see what happens. And for the operation overview, so the United States has been tasked to clearing the roadblock in the city of Al-Bashar. Insurgent forces must defend the roadblock on the main road of Al-Bashar as long as possible. And after destroying the roadblock, the United States forces must exfil uh, to the island east of Al-Bashar, but actually that changed to a states. 
because of the way the layouts are. So it's now estates. So it looks like the United States is still trying to get set up here. It looks like they're getting a little bit closer. I'm going to get ready for the briefing. Brief starting or no? Uh, shortly. As soon as everybody... Basically, since you guys don't get a squad lead brief right now, except for me... We are pushing down near Fringe, and we're going to hold there until... Well, soon he'll bring him in and give him a platoon brief as to what's going on. And then following that, we are going to have two squads rushing. They already know which squad I think, uh, I think Google tricks his fan and lets us know that, he, yes, he does keep it tight. And the rest of us are going to push into a fire support role, and then move off of that fire support role to estates if they get the halves down. So if you take a look here, you can kind of see how the squads are going to be laid out. And, um, you know, everyone's just kind of, everyone's kind of just uh, getting ready. So, uh, you know what, we're going to go over the squad leaders and the command just to get everybody who wasn't here filled in. So if we take a quick look, we got on Space Wolves, SM Pure Paradise. So long, Sia Gong Dong by Sightless leading that squad. The Eagles is being led by Truth Realm. Logan Dies is being run by Odessa, and we got the Command Squad, of course, by Google Trex here on the United States yeah, side. Over here on the of this so what are you looking like over on the Insurgent side, Expit? Uh, well, we've got the best pony in Command. we got Server Error 404 and Charge of Squad 1. We're at Rock the Casbah, led by Turtle Guy 5 and Squad 2. Uh, Looks like Han Von Solo is run, running the uh, Light the Fires squad, and Brennan's Bastards is led by, of course, the gaming Brennan. And Best Pony is just Command. He's just running nice and clean tonight, just Best Pony in Command. So it looks like Google Trex is getting the United States set up, uh, getting ready to give a briefing. I'm excited to hear what Google Trex has to say, um, what his plans are, what he learned from the last op or from the last round, and. You know, see what really, you know, what they're going to do and how they're going to, like, enforce that plan. You're my buddy. All right, everybody here? Two set of streams. Well, lines, two lines. We go. All right, good job last round, everybody. Held tight and did it. So we're gonna do it again. We're gonna beat this one. So the plan, as it Sightless stands, sightless. What? He's not here. His entire squad's over there. Oh my gosh, sightless. I was just about to start the command brief without you. Go for it. Uh, we're coming. Copy. Copy. I thought this seemed a little small. Well. Look at these. Good command. All right, false start, false start. Hey, right, 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 comms, right, right, right. comms, none of that. Thank you. All right, once again, good job last round, everybody. We're going to do it again. We're going to wipe them out. So the plan for this time around is we're going to, everybody's going to mount up. We're going to run along this western side past village cross that little baby bridge drivers be careful and we're going to end up holding just uh just to the west of fringe here on indefinitely the entire platoon and we're going to have a couple of vehicles run into scouting positions and try and get eyes on the roadblock once we know where the roadblock is sightless and odessa are going to take their squads and they're going to basically blitz that thing and they're going to rush in, smoke it out, and dig it up. The remainder of the forces are going to move into fire support positions as best they can, most likely along the south end of this space here near Fringe. Um, and if it's close, they can lay down supporting fire. If not, 
we're just trying to basically get into a position where we can move to estates. And if they happen to get that, we'll move to estates and lock it down, basically, because they're going to have to push us. If they don't happen to make it, the remainder of the forces are going to mount a second assault and push that Habs location. But I have confidence that Odessa and Sightless are going to make us proud. So any other details your squad leads are going to have for you, but that's the basic plan. Any questions? Can you actually lat, lat down the... Um, yeah, we discussed that. It's, it's not going to have... We're still going to end up having to get on it and dig it because we have to take the stakes up. So we're just going to make the F full effort to go to it instead of trying that janky shoot it until it's down thing. Good idea, but it won't really work. It could, but I'd rather not risk friendly fire because we're any guys right on it. And you might be able to take some of the enemies down if we put our lats towards shooting into windows. Because more than likely, they're going to be holed up in buildings, so... Obviously, your squad leads are going to direct where the lats shoot, but... That's... I'd rather not use them on the Habs. Don't underestimate the uh, usefulness of a lot of anti end material. I know my squad in particular, we took two to three casualties last round from uh, the 66mm laws, so... Any other question? Is Estate still the exfil point? Estate is still the exfil point, yes. Uh, sir, a lot of us won't make it back after this respawn. Can you please give us some words to send us off? You're dying for America. Oh. You're gonna make us proud. America. Oh. Great choice! <laughs> Alright, any other questions? Who can I give my letter to? Hold up, hold up. It's for my wife. You're not Marine. Anything, no, anything related to the op, we gotta get this going, guys. Sir, no, sir. All right, squad leads, break them out. We'll get a live time shortly. All right, so welcome back. So we just heard the United States side and what their plan is going to be. From what it looks like, Sightless and Odessa squad are going to rush, smoke, and try to dig the hab. They're just going to rush in there. Um, everyone else is basically going to provide fire support for them. Um, you know, they have faith in Sightless and Odessa to take down this hab, so hopefully they can. But let's say something goes bad, the rest of the squad is going to regroup. They're going to come together, and they're going to try to push the hab again for another assault. If... Sightless and Odessa do get the hab. They are moving to Estates. And I'll show you where Estates is right now. Estates is down here. And they will basically hold that down. So it looks like uh, the, it's live now. So we'll see what happens. is bravo that's mostly just for uh you guys are still commanding your own vehicles the main reason for that is with contingency if you guys both get fucked hey humvee in the front we're going the wrong way we need to head over toward village. all right let's take a look at this jishka techie these things are fun they're like doom buggies at doom uh it's got a good firepower it's you know fairly decent it's got great speed it's often a good kind of skirmishing unit and uh, it doesn't have much defense, though, as this stuff was built with uh, leftover aluminum cans. So it's fun to shoot, fun to drive, but don't get in a full frontal firefight with it because you will not last long. Put on the car. Fuck it. Try so it really looks like the, uh, out there. the, the insurgency is setting up mines, getting ready, getting ready for the U.S. to come. Yeah, let me place it. There I go. If it won't place tree. whatsoever, just head on over there. Okay, good. So, it's interesting now looking at what the United States is doing. It looks like they sent most of their platoon here to village. And um, they sent off one crew of Humvee drivers, uh, a Humvee gunner driver, out all the way to the east. So, um, I'm curious to see... Uh, What's going to happen with them? Hopefully, Expo can get a shot of that. But right now. 
I'm right watching now, the uh, U.S. platoon coming into the village, and the INS have got a couple of technicals out here. I don't think they see him or hear him yet. But there looks like J. remix has got his binocs out, and he's going to take a look. He will know soon enough. Have an exfil strategy as well. I don't see it Scout, stay alive as well as you can. If you have to stay, that looks like they see him. Oh, maybe these technicals are going to go ahead and. I'm in behind yeah, so it looks flanking. like, yeah, the United States is trying to sneak around here, but uh, if they were spotted, it's not going to end up too well. We'll see what happens here. I mean, this is most of their platoon. That's pretty serious if they're spotted already. Well, for certain they're spotted. They just maybe know the uh, of their mouth, but it's, it's, if it's transports vehicles, they know that there are at least one or two squads in those trucks, so... So we're just following the United States here. They're trying to uh, go through with their plan. They're pushing down to Fringe, and uh, we're going to have, I believe this is Sightless and Odessa squad, and they're the ones that are going to be pushing the hab. They're just going to be bum-rushing it. Um, they're going to smoke it up and try to dig it out and so they can push to a state as quick as possible. Oh, so look at Crazy. Yeah, we're at Crazy Russian right now, and it looks like the techies are starting to head south. You good? Uh, I think they're trying to follow them, see where they go, maybe come up behind them. You can see the U.S. team in the far distance here in the blue. Uh, technicals are heading where they used to be, and the, the U.S. has already reached the French. It also looks like uh, Odessa and Silas' squad just left those uh, transport trucks and they're starting to push into fringe now. Well, that's pretty smart with these technicals out here. You definitely don't want to get caught in one of those. Yeah, you can see these groups trying to you know, get themselves set up again, trying to get paired up, get their squads together. Um, we'll see where they move in and what happens. Bunny predicts a failed U.S. assault, huh? From <laughs> yeah, I just saw that. No north-south pincer movement. Well, that, that could be. Uh, hitting the hab from one direction is never a good thing. Be due north of us. Especially when uh, when you've got all this kind of 3D environment that, you know, two dimensions around. both not only on the physical plane which you're looking at, but in yeah, elevation, so... South. Alright, so if you take a look on my screen right now, it's crispy and it looks like a crazy Russian. They are all the way down in that technical, that Dishka techie. And, uh, oh, they're, they, they're heading towards the United States main platoon. There's no way that they don't see them right now. Well, they might have to just pull backwards, so. Yeah, this is, uh... How far away? Yeah, this is Odessa and Silas's squad. They're the ones who are supposed to be bum-rushing the hab. And it's Crispy and a crazy Russian are just eyeing them down. Oh, but United States just called out that techie. We'll see if they start getting some lats out on that techie to push them away, scare them off. But they're definitely spotted. Up oh, and there's shots going out. Oh yeah, enemy uh, have. Oh, yeah. Enemy have spotted. It is uh, Those technicals getting all hit. It. <laughs> Get in, get in the defilade here, get some cover. Right above the 
Oh, uh, the technical's hey, now you opening up. That's good. Contact, get the fuck out of there. You guys should be hit and run. <sighs> looks like Russian's got a bandage there. Oh no, and it looks like Russian just died. Oh, and they're getting hit from the road. The US is pushed up onto the road now. And Crispy doesn't see him. And it looks like there's another set of uh, Dishkoteki with Triton and Gonzo that spotted the United States too. Oh, and the United States just went into this compound to try to get out of that open area. It's definitely not a good spot to be. So there was Triton's Dishkoteki. Yeah, it looks like Crispy's out of here. He's not going to stand much against that. His technical is pretty banged up, and he's banged up himself. Just get an overview. It looks like the INS is starting to readjust, so they're trying to get more bodies towards the south of Al Basra. And you can see all the blue there in the distance. They're within 100 meters of Remick. Yeah, they're close to where I'm at. They're literally less than 100 meters from me. I took pop shots at that Humvee, and... So it looks like the United States is trying to regroup back up. It looks like they got their Humvee and their MRAP. And I wonder if they're going to go after those Dishkotekis, try to take him out. But it definitely yeah. looks that way. Yeah, so there's a lot of comms going on in command right now about how to readjust to this. Yeah, one thing that makes me nervous is that MRAP is full of a whole squad right now. And if that MRAP goes down, that's a big loss. Definitely looks like the United States is trying to reposition, try to think of a plan to readjust to those Dishkotekis. Um, but it looks like those guys are hurt in that Dishkoteki, so. No, I'm just. I'm Gonzo, I know, like I said, so, yeah, so a, couple of, a couple of rounds, small arms into those things, yeah. It's not, doesn't do much good. J.R. is scouting out those U.S. soldiers just over the freeway there, the elevated road. He actually ran all the way back where the techies saw them at Village, back to this position. Looks like the U.S. is readjusting. I've got a, like a full squad loaded up in trance now, and they are moving to the west. Yeah, that squad is actually Sightless and Odessa's squad. So that was the squad that was originally... Oh, oh, oh. and looks like two just went down. Oh, one yes. just went down. A technical sitting right here at the corner. Oh, and they just all bailed. They bailed in... It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. crazy and Russian. Crazy Russian. As you can see from... Oh, Russian just died. Yeah. Chris, we just went down. That was it. Oh, the squad is <laughs> dismounted and is a little riled right now by that, but it looks like they're loading right back up, undaunted by that technical fire. They're going to keep pushing on. Yeah, they took out the gunner and, you know, they're back at it. They're readjusting to the plan and, you know, that's what it's going to be. It's just going to be constant readjustments as the battle goes down. I hope they don't forget that there's two technicals oh, out here. Oh, what? It looks like they just got a few guys just got taken out. Yep. The, the in, INS has a uh, dish gun mounted up in one of the multi-story apartment buildings. They're putting yep, fire on now. Taking those... fire. Go. A little lower. A little lower. Yeah, the United States right now, they're just sitting in a really bad spot. Uh, not on the saw. They really gotta push up, try to uh, get into some cover, get out of this open area. Oh, it looks like they're finally moving. That's good. Oh, 
Let's just take a look at the uh, how many are alive. Looks like INS has lost five. Nope. Nope. Yes, five. And the US has lost three. So just in front, under this bridge, there is an IED and just about 50 meters. So if they have eyes on that bridge and that's platoon or that two squads go under that bridge, that could be really devastating to the United States. Yeah, I'm not too sure if anybody or the person who put that down is still alive, but if they are, that could be serious. I think it's Jay Remick's IED. Hey, I don't see him anymore. Blow it, blow it now, blow it now, blow it now. Oh, he... Oh, and there goes that IED. This didn't look like... like... Got him. Oh. Yeah, the United States didn't take casualties there, but Good I'm sure it spoofed him. Both techies down. Remick's trying to get to one techie. Yeah, so as you can see, the United States has taken fire from, uh, you know, the big apartment buildings on the insurgents' side. You know, the insurgents are doing a really good job keeping the uh, United States' heads down, you know, disrupting their plans. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the United States comes up with and how they're going to go about completing the task. Well, it looks like Google's kind of moving up uh, this other squad here. That's a uh, U.S. command. They stay down there, and it looks like they're about to cross this uh, MSR to try to get in the, the south approach here. But once again, they're spotted by Adishka. They, they are pinned everywhere they go. U.S. just can't move over these embankments. They've the INS have got those jishkas up high enough where they can cover any kind of movement that crosses these. They're gonna have to find a different approach if they're gonna want to get around this. Yeah, one of them, the main advantages for the insurgents is the fact that they have the height advantage. You know, they can see a lot more than the United States can see. So, you know, the United States has has good positioning so they can get good shots on, or they have to have you know fire CMS superiority. Center, but you know they're really getting pinned down hard, so they can't get too many shots off. It looks like. Squad leader. Bunny says smoke and push. That's definitely one way to get across the open space, especially this far out. Looks like this uh, squad to the south is getting fire superiority now on those buildings. Hopefully to pin them down and get some movement going here. It's always, it's always easy to judge other people when they're on the ground, when you're not there yourself as to what's going on. But as this, uh, U.S. command comms are crazy with a lot of traffic, a lot of communication about readjusting and what the plan is from here. Yeah, it looks like um, the United States just took their two transport trucks, and I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're going for a distraction. But, uh, the or if they're just the going to try to get around to flank, but they just took two trucks and they're out of there. Are we holding here? Is he coming back? He's supposedly coming in. I don't know what's going on with him. And as you can see, you know, they're still on this bank here and they're trying to, you know, keep the uh, insurgents' heads down. If you look at Jay Remick right now, Jay Remick's got eyes on. Oh, he just took out Loma? Tactical Loma. A yeah, bunch of US... United States guys are hurt, too. Yeah, I, I see nothing. But... They, yeah, definitely. They keep out that that uh, transport truck. That transport truck is nothing but a, a hearst for them this entire match, it seems like. 
Yeah, it seems that uh, they don't want to be in that transport truck. Following Jay Remick now, he's got on his motorcycle. He's out of there. He's done his duty for the day. Looks like he's gonna try to make get a different angle on him. I don't know what he's doing, but he's been a busy man so far. Hear me, hear my come here. Everybody here, hold fire. We're gonna push with this M wrap. We're gonna push right up the road. Everybody's gonna basically push with me. We're gonna pick a couple on each side of the road, and we're gonna walk it. Sounds like uh, we're gonna get some uh, yeah, I'm up. command orders here. You want to smoke it? I'm not taking it. They're shooting at us, but not anything accurate. What do you want Squad 4 to do? We're still in the west. We just left the site list. Um, at this point, I think it's better to just push. If you want to push the transport up toward the corner there. Oh God. So looking to the, or listening to the United States commands, it sounds like they're trying to think of a new plan. Google said it's best to push right now, so he wants them to take the transport and get as close as they can in the buildings. So we got Odessa squad here. Um, Google trucks just told them to grab that transport truck and push in. We'll see what, when they do that and how fast they go. Anybody who has command of the guys that are down here with me, tell them to push on my on my pause. So if you can look at Jay Remick again, he's going to be shooting at Odessa's squad potentially. Oh, there we go. Jay Rambic is, is out here doing doing work again. He's is spotting the U.S. teams, watching them on their first bank there at that uh, that road. Looks like he's out of there. Yeah, that's enough. He can't take it. They're moving. They're moving. Yeah. So here's Jay Remick right now. He's just speeding along, trying to get out of there, get a new angle. Right over their head. It seems like he's just you know. Popping off at the United States, and then when he starts to take fire, he's bailing, moving, and then doing the same thing. Squad four, are you gonna be able to push direct, uh, directly west from or east from there? We'll try. Yeah, we're trying to fire the. Where were the U.S. moves? It seems like that dish gets nailing them, and that is a loss of an asset. So you're seeing Google tricks right now. Everybody keep pushing on me, get to cover and keep pushing. He looks like he's pushing in. Put, All right, keep moving. Pushing in through the yeah. buildings, he's trying to clear him out, make sure that, uh, you know, they're sweeping and clearing out the insurgents so they don't get hit from behind. Oh, you want a GL shot? And the Google squad's definitely taking fire right now. Hey, firm, hold yep, me. command out in front. He's getting close, though. All right, I got a GL. Hold up. I'm going to peek and give you a bearing. All right, I've got a bearing. 028, third floor down. The U.S. has a lot of ground to cover, and they haven't even touched that hab yet. Third so. floor from the top. A little lower. Uh, looks, looks like, like them. Yeah, it looks like B Dog was uh, shooting at Han Solo and Bubbles. They definitely have a uh, sight on them. They know they're in that building. Zero two two from this corner. Same floor. See the guy? I think Ghoul is trying to get eyes on this Jishka that's planted up in the corner of this apartment building here. Oh, that was close. Yeah, it sounds like they're putting GLs on. 
This could be good for the U.S. Oh, sure they just shot a GL. So far. We just need to keep pushing. We're not going to have to do a building to building push here to try and get close. Uh, Pierre, do you still have a support vehicle up there? Or is it gone too? Yeah, my Humvee's fully active. It's down to pretty much less than half ammo, but it can do shit. Gotcha. Do you want to try? Why don't you try and take it to the west where that transport is and hey, slowly Ray. push in on that road? Yeah. I'm gonna have you Roger bring that. one of my yeah, guys with you, so we have so we have comms between us. Copy. We got sandbags right up here. That's me. I got. Close shots, close shots north. Oh, Google's taking shots. He just got hit. Oh, he's backing out. Yeah, he is bleeding right now. He's trying to bandage up. Hold one. Just took shot. Roger. We're following Odessa here. It looks like her squad is moving up to the northwest over the HAB. So far, undetected. So that's good for the U.S. At least they'll have some kind of uh, action on the north side. Another unit to help suppress or make movement. Single approach is never good, especially with all these buildings. Slowly creeping their way up the street here, checking every ankle. So Blazing Fire and Linjin are uh, shooting at those windows that has Silent Death and Family Phantom in it. They want to keep their heads down, give uh, their guys a chance to move up, clear those sandbags, and start clearing some more buildings. Oh, it looks like Google got hit again. He's bandaging back up. Oh, those mortars are starting to get really close. The insurgents are shooting off mortars towards the United States right now, and, you know, that was less than 50 meters away. And they're still going down. If those are moved a little bit more towards towards them, they would have been taken some serious casualties. If command goes down, we just gotta keep pushing. Yeah, Bravo, start, start slowly making your way back. Uh, cover... Cover poke as he retreats, and then move back uh, kind of together, cover each other. I wonder if they're going to readjust Take those mortars and uh, get here safe. Thank you, Eli. try to keep shooting at the Americans here. Oh, yeah, we got I mean, I would. I would keep uh, pushing them into the kill boxes. Yep. And, you know, one of Big Pony's strategies, he said, you know, he wanted good defense. He wanted tight defense. He wanted to sit in the apartment buildings. And, you know, that's what they're doing, and they're funneling in through the entrances. You know, the United States really is you know, taking a lot of casualties here. Yep, exactly what uh, Google did. This northern squad's slowly moving up. The point man here, Claus, is getting really close. Oh, and the United States over here uh, looks like Google Trex's squad. They just threw a bunch of smoke grenades, so it looks like they're going to make a push now. They threw about six smoke grenades, so you'll see them go off. Once these smokes develop and I say go, we're pushing north across this. Yeah, so it on, sounds on like Google's pushing, north. as you can see on his screen. We're trying to get up to the next up building. Right and on this road north. Yep, Google is the command, so, you know, he's the one calling the shots. So if he goes down, there could be a little bit of chaos for a little bit. It sounds like the United States is getting ready to push through that smoke. Up this road, everybody push in a fire. Alright, here they go. Push, 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 push. Everybody keep moving up this road, up this road. Google's push. giving them some uh, motivation, telling them to push up. Fire if you need to, he says. And uh, they're continuing to throw smokes, continuing to push. Looks like they're taking some fire. Oh, and B Dog just went down. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Google's telling everybody keep to keep moving. moving. Don't stop. Don't stop. Right now, you know, the United States, they are 
right in the street, right in the open. They do have a lot of smoke, but that's not going to help them if they're taking gunfire. Kahuna went down. Google Trex just went down. That's their command. Torch went down. A lot of guys just went down there. Sneaky well, Sniper a... just took some shots from Best Pony, and Sneaky Sniper is down. Best Pony gets him. Best Pony also gets Linjin. And Best Pony's down. Wow. Yeah, that was a that was a good push. I yeah, mean, that was it costed it costed a lot, but uh it was good to see. I mean uh, right some kind of movement. The south side here. Yeah, it looks like uh Blazing Fire O2 is the last remaining guy in that yeah. little squad. So he's just sitting here in this house, um, and I believe he has people right above him. And he just he just took some fire, blazing fire too. He's bandaging up right now. It's only us. Alright, looks like Blazing Fire 2 is trying to push him through this building. Oh. He's leaving. Uh, get... And he is down. Looks like Carson or Gaming Brennan got him. Meanwhile, we've got a little firefight brewing on the north side here. Dustin's squad has finally ran into some contacts. We've got Nasty Nate up here and uh, Shamrock holding down these stairs. They know they're up here. They don't haven't decided if they're going to push them or what they're going to do. Meanwhile, in the distance there, you can see Ray get uh, hit. He's bandaging. Okay, so we got Odessa and Miyamoto. It looks like they're pushing up to the second floor. Oh, they're running away. They're scared. Oh, boy. They're throwing another grenade. Alright, it looks like they're gonna push. Oh, oh, and they're both down. And that was Nasty Nate. Nasty Nate just took them out. That was intense. We got uh, Sexy Ton. Sexy Ton threw a grenade. And Nasty Nate's just watching those stairs. Looks like... Sexy Ton's coming up, and Sexy Ton is down. Look at those bodies. There is four U.S. bodies right now on the staircase. Copy that. Uh, they're actually west underneath. They've taken out at least four uh, U.S. so far. Roger. You got any frags left? All right, so uh, the United States' main objective is basically to dismantle the insurgent roadblock, and that roadblock is a hab. Um, do you have uh, eyes on that hab? Oh, here it is right here. So if you take a look on the screen, this is the hab that the United States was supposed to take down. Um, the uh, insurgents must defend the roadblock. This is the roadblock they must defend. Uh, and yeah, so this is uh, the objective right here. Oh, looks like we've got a fire team moving up here on the east side, Truth Realm and his squad. He's got Pan with him. You know, X, but one thing I did notice is that uh, the United States has 26 deaths while the Insurgent has 21. So it's not too bad, but, you know, the, insur uh, the United States definitely took a lot of casualties. Oh boy, and now they got fire from across, across from the street here, the north. It's 
one of the dangers of this kind of urban combat is you never know what angle the enemy is going to pop out of. Oh, oh shit. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, Looks like the back blast got one of their own sorry, guys too. He's bandaging from it. He won't get... He was on the second floor, he was on the balcony. He went back inside though. So right here we have Eggmo and Terry the trail. And it looks like they're trying to shoot up at Nasty Nate. They know he's there, so see if they can take him out. I mean, Nasty Notes, Nate just killed four of their teammates, so. Alright, I'm gonna get around. As some would say, he's got a nasty shot. There was a guy in this building last time I was, was looking at it, so. Alright. Fuck this barbed wire. Nah, they're all dead. They're all dead. It's just six of us. Well, these three guys over here are figuring who's gonna go where and what's gonna happen. We've got FX-1000, Banana, and uh, Pantascope, so... Let's see what they're gonna do here. It looks like they're gonna cross the road, get to the other side. Yeah, and if you look at, uh, Terry the Tali and Egmo, this is exactly what Best Pony was talking about with funneling. As you can see, they made these funnel zones. You know, they made it so they only have one tight path in, which is a kill zone. So this is uh, definitely a good tactic here. Hey, you said you're fucked up? Yeah. Yep, so it looks like Egmo and Terry are pushing into this building. And as you can see, this building is like really funneled up so you know they have to be very careful of where they walk they don't want to run into the barbed wire because not only will it make noise but it will hurt them up oh, and there's there's two oh, russians yeah, waiting for them and it looks like best pony just went up uh yeah best pony just went fuck, down fuck, someone else just smoked, did I... copy oh. is your building compromised an egg Eggmo got Han Solo, and server error just took out him. Eggmo's down, server error got him. And, yeah, and server is bandaging. Looks like he took a few shots there. But he's back ready for action. You guys can try to fall back to the FOB building. Meanwhile, you know, these three guys are trying to clear this building, but they just passed the INS just laying near the hall. Taking shots from the south. And, uh, you know, just looking at chat, Bunny brought up a good point. He said he enjoys when command goes down because now you get to see how regular soldiers act on their own initiative. And that's so true, you know. They have to think of their own plans now. They don't have someone leading the whole team. So it's definitely going to change the way that they operate and, you know. We'll take a look here. Yeah, they're just sitting in this building scanning, waiting for somebody to pop their head out of the window. Yeah, it is interesting watching watching what they what their plans are, how they work. It's almost like when you remove half the platoon off the battlefield, everybody else starts to work more of it more as a team. There's less confusion, less comms going on. You get more of those buddy teams and uh, fire teams working together. Yeah, the only problem the only problem is hopefully they can uh, communicate and they're not too split up. You know, once the squad leaders goes down, you know, it's hard to uh, now, understand now, what's going on within right, squads on unless you're local here. chat. Medic, uh, just... Let's take a look here what we got going on. It looks like their buddy died upstairs and just these two left over here. One in each building clearing it. I believe these are the last two that are left.
Looks like, like FX one thousand just took some shots. It's yeah, one of the last managed. two, it looks like. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. You said that he was bandaging. Looks like he is. Yep, he's bandaging for sure. These windows are like a picture. You know, you pop your head out of them, it's like everybody sees you. Bless it. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Taking shots, taking shots, taking shots. Oh, okay. looks like Panda just took some shots too from um, Night Trader and uh, Piddle. Oh, looks like Panda just shot a LAT, but didn't get anybody. Oh, Panda just went down by Piddle. So oh, there man. is one left. what he decides to do it sounds it seems like he's sitting here waiting for them to come to him that's not the plan <laughs> and it sounds like server error wants everybody to wait and have the United States come to them I mean, they really do have the advantage right now. They have full eyes on the objective, which is that have right over there. Well, he's not left with much choice but to Check every angle, check every window, and then keep moving. And he just took a shot, FX. He is definitely hurting right now. And yep. XF or FX just went down. I think they're just trying to make sure everybody's dead right now before they call a good game. So we'll just make sure real quick. The sandbag? There and go. there's the call. So that's the end of the round. It looks like Insurgent took it Broadcast twice. Boys. Both rounds Insurgent's won. So. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, this is a hard one for the U.S. because you have to come into a city with a platoon up against an entrenched enemy. It's, uh, it's a tough one for sure. Yep, but you get to experience it from both sides, so you know, it was a good game. Yeah, no, excellent rounds. I mean, it was actually real fun to watch. A lot of good firefights. Yeah, there's a lot of... Yeah, there's a lot of really intense moments, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of explosives that went off. It was uh, definitely a really great op. Got to watch uh, transports run around the open, get shot at. <laughs> yeah, I thought... I think one of my favorite moments from this game was when uh, they shot an RPG through the window and hit the uh, machine gun. That oh was yeah, just absolutely phenomenal shot. Yeah, that's that. That's a, one of those things they added in the last update, and it's uh, definitely effective. You can get a shot on it. Was it, it? It did. It took down that dishka. You know, if they had more men, they could have crossed the street. The dishka wasn't pinning them anymore. It was a definite advantage. Uh, sounds like we're gonna have a couple of people join us here and give us a little their, their view of things. Uh, so stick around.
let's just take a look here at chat to see if we missed any good comments or questions going on. Yeah, it looks like Gunstone said that he admires the patience. Well, in these ops, you know, you only have one life, so the way you play is a lot different than if you were just playing a normal game of squad. You definitely have to, uh, you definitely have to think more tactically and you have to be aware of where you're moving and make sure you have cover because once you're dead, that's it. Yeah, I mean, this map is, is a is a death bowl. I mean, really, I mean, every window, every floor is open. I mean, walking down the street, you get shot from, a, you know, like a thousand different angles. It's a tough one to maneuver through. It is uh, probably a... It's, it's probably a really good map for this kind of operation because it, it forces the uh, the the attacker to um, really get good cover and move to cover to cover. So it's not like a quick assault. They have to clear and slowly methodically move through the different rooms and different streets and locations in order to get up to the objective. Yeah, and this is a huge city too. So it's not an easy task to clear a big city like this, especially when you can go on almost every building. All right, it sounds like we've got our couple of uh, guests with us. We got Big Yes and Google Tricks. Say hello, gentlemen. Howdy. Hey, how's it going? So Big Yes was actually in my command squad for the EU session, and that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was some good fun. Yeah, Google, this is your first time commanding, so. How yeah, was it was a lot of fun. You? Yeah. Um, I, I actually quite enjoyed it. I was I was expecting it to be a little more stressful, but it was a lot of fun to try and kind of keep the whole picture going in the right direction. Uh, that that whole uh, transport move at the uh, in that last round, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it was fun to watch. <laughs> it didn't go off the way I was hoping it would, but I think it was a lot of fun to try and coordinate something like that. Pony just happened to have the perfect counter for it. Yeah, you both kind of played your defenses really close. I mean, just everybody held their spot, just keep close, let them come to us, and it, it played out into the insurgents' hands both times, so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Google, you know, you had a lot of uh, the chat rooting for you that game, so. You know, what was going through your mind uh, when the chaos started to break down? You guys threw all those smokes towards the end of the game, and you told everybody, don't stop moving. You know, what yeah, was going through that? Basically, I knew that the the halves, the roadblock there was on that south side of the intersection. I knew we were close to it. So I was hoping to smoke out the road and get my guys in that building, actually where the fob looked, I didn't know until I died, but where that fob radio was. I was hoping to get in there, get a lockdown, and then smoke the halves itself and dig it. But I knew we would be under fire, even if it was blind fire. So I wanted them to keep moving. Uh, just They ended up having just the right angles on us there, where even from the building we were going to, they. They ended up, you know, seeing that push. So, Best Pony definitely had a great setup for countering both that that final attempt to push there, and uh, and definitely countering that transport that failed transport push. So it was real. It was a lot of fun to try and execute, and definitely countered really well. Yeah, in the first round, you guys definitely did really well with your MG emplacements. I recognize that you had that one in this little high rise. I was looking down at like one lane of fire or that one street and you essentially just pinned us down and couldn't get over at all was just locking down that road i really enjoyed yeah, that, that dish was doing work yeah. yeah and uh best pony you know when we listened to your briefing there was a few things that really stuck out to me you said that you wanted tight defense you wanted to sit in the apartments and you wanted to funnel the entrances and if you look at that fob, if you look at that fob building, you guys funneled it up. Like you made that a kill zone. Yep, that was that was very much the idea. I looked at that courtyard and I decided that was probably the best location in the city where you can actually build a decent super fob and you can really entrench. Because you have a lot of entrances are just broken walls, which you're allowed to uh, completely block off, and then there's just a few left to funnel. So we just yeah, we turned that courtyard into a fortress and then staffed the apartment buildings around it with uh, troops, lats, HMGs, just made sure there was no way the U.S. was getting anywhere near that intersection. Yeah, that was awesome. That was really awesome to watch and to see how you guys executed that. You know, you really made it a uh, living hell for the United States there. 
they did and i think a funny part about that is your super publication here we actually didn't even notice it until we were making a last desperate ditch attempt to to come in on the west southwest side there and i happened to run into it and i was like oh well this is different this is unexpected but it definitely did its job and it stopped us in cold yeah even if it just like delays or distracts you know each team for a little bit that that can be big a big play right there so best pony i'm curious what was your favorite part of that op uh well i'll have to be selfish and say the part during the second round where i, I gunned down all those people in the street and where server you know it was kind of getting late in the round we were like hey they're running short on time what are they gonna do and all of a sudden i hear server from two force boomies scream out south south and i look out the window and there's four or five u.s soldiers just sprinting up the road right towards the super fob so i just kept working my way up through different windows taking shots at them and i got to the roof finished last one off and probably got my brains thrown right out of my head by a 50 cal so it's pretty fun <laughs> Funny. And Google, what about you? You know, since it was your first stop, you know, what was uh, the most memorable part of it? Well, I really liked the fact that, again, kind of selfishly, that here on when we set up our defenses on the north here, that we happened to be just at the right spot to see that that double transport dismount that Pony pulled off there into refinery, and. I just remember seeing that and seeing everything come in and I had the perfect amount of people already kind of positioned on the north there and it was just satisfying to see that go that attack against them go off relatively effectively and yeah I really enjoyed that part yeah like like your uh, your defense was perfectly set up for that approach almost you know with the yeah. looking down that that, that road and it seemed that Best Pony, at the same time in the second round, set up his defense perfectly for what we were planning. So well played, Pony. Thank you, same to you. Oh, guys, it's it was an exciting couple of rounds to watch. It was a lot of good firefights, all kinds of fun. Any last words? <laughs> None. All right, all right. Well, <laughs> silence says enough, I guess. No, but uh, you know, we hope everybody in the chat enjoyed the operation this month, this week. Um, you know, stay tuned because obviously there's going to be a lot more operations coming up, a lot more to stream, uh, a lot more exciting events, and a lot more chaos. So, well, thanks, Best Pony and Google Tricks and Big Yes for coming in and visiting with us and giving us your perspective. Uh, it's always fun to do. Yeah, yeah, sure. Anytime. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for commanding. It was awesome to watch. Well, guys, I think that's going to be the end of the stream for us tonight. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to all the cameras. They uh, they give you that uh, point of view from the ground. That's awesome. I also like to give a shout out to uh, the guy behind the scenes, Pin. He's kind of like the uh, the Oz. So big, big clap to Pin for all the work he does. It brings you all those special angles, all the great graphics. I mean, I mean, really, it's uh, the show he puts on, and yelling in our ear what we're supposed to be doing. is awesome. Man out a great stream so uh and i uh, like to put a thanks out to everybody who participated in the op it's uh it's kind of hard to get into these and when you do it's uh, it's awesome fun so shout out to them and uh herpy oh thanks thank for you. helping out tonight yeah it was awesome uh it was my first time commentating and i hope i can do it again soon um, but yeah everybody who hasn't signed up you should go to the website squadops.gg uh, sign up for the forums, take a look at uh, the website, the calendar, see what events are coming up. You know, it's good fun. So everybody here is definitely uh, awesome people. Well, with that, guys, I think it's going to do it for us tonight. Thanks for uh, stopping by, watching the uh, operation. Uh, be sure to check us out later in the week as we run some more. And as always, uh, go to squadops.gg for the latest events and information.